Now that you know the coordinate transformations from going from spherical to Cartesian and Cartesian to spherical, let's just test you with a practical example. You can also find this in your lecture notes in section 9.6. Essentially, the question asks you to go from Cartesian coordinates that x, y, z equal to minus 1, 1, square root of 2, and you want to transform this into 3D spherical. What does this imply? It implies calculating what r, what theta, and what phi really are. If you don't remember, you can always go back to the previous video or the lecture notes, but the quarter transformations that you need are r equals plus or minus square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared. Theta, same as 2d polar, that is arctan of y over x. And phi, which is the zenith angle, the angle between the z, the z Cartesian axis and where your point really is, is arctan of square root of x squared plus y squared over z. To do this, you can get rid of this so you can get some space. And remember, we want to calculate r, theta, phi. And this is also a very good time to tell you that just like converting from Cartesian 2D to polar 2D, you really had to check which quadrant you're at. For 3D, this is also going to be incredibly important. If we write the three axes, and if we look at this point, we'll be looking at something that's negative in x, it's positive in y, and positive in z. The point will be, the projection will be somewhere here. Whatever we do, and the solutions we get with r, theta, and phi, we need to end up being there. This is an important constraint. In this case, we get square root of 1 squared plus 1 squared plus square root of 2 squared. This ends up being square root of 4. It's 2. For arctan, we're looking at the arctan of 1 over minus 1. That's minus 1. A potential solution is therefore minus pi over 4. And finally, for phi, we're looking at arctan of square root of 2 over square root of 2 and a potential solution in this case is pi over 4. This is where it's really important to check where you would end up if you just use this. Also at this point you probably realize that I forgot that plus or minus. This is always a very good opportunity to you to check things again so that you can actually pick the correct value. In this case one of the easiest things is probably for you to pick one of the coordinates and then see which other coordinates you need to get there. Let's say that we want r to be positive, meaning 2. Can we take this combination of angles? It turns out that you cannot. And if you look at it, you'll see that theta would be processed this way. This would be minus pi over 4. And then with pi over 4 up, you would end up here. This would be negative in y, positive in x, positive in z. But you want negative in x, positive in y, positive in z. A way, a very simple way to deal with it is there's not a lot of things you can do with this angle and you always end up correctly. The big degeneracy is between theta and r as before because we're inheriting the 2D polar system. Therefore, a way to look at this is to understand that if you go for a positive angle of 3 pi over 4, it's also a solution to this equation and you end up getting just right 3 pi over 4. And a solution would therefore be 3 pi over 4 and pi over 4. This corresponds to points in Cartesian which are minus 1, 1, square root of 2. If you prefer fixing r to minus 
2, then you really need to find the combination of angles to do this because R is then pointing towards the other direction, which also requires you to flip phi. Because of this, I would suggest that you pick R to be positive, you check which theta you will require, and in principle, phi will be correct straight away. But there's nothing like looking at the Cartesian axis and making sure that your point ends up being in the same place as your Cartesian coordinates. And that's basically it for section nine on coordinates and coordinate transformations. I would really encourage you to try the other examples. Also have a look at more generic examples that allow you to manipulate expressions. For example, functions that are given in terms of Cartesian into functions that are transformed into 3D spherical or 3D cylindrical systems. And if you have questions, just get in touch. And it's probably time to get my ukulele and disappear out of section nine and get ready for the very final section of Physics 101 which is directional derivatives. How do I disappear again? Oh, that's it. I'll see you for the final part of Physics 101 directional derivatives.